Does so that keep kind of getting asked the same dumb question over and over again? He's like, uh, well, I like this lens. I, I said before in a prior video, you should never buy a lens based upon what you could do to uh, the images in Lightroom. You buy a lens with the best possible characteristics out of camera because there are certain things that you cannot add or do in Lightroom or on your computer. It has to actually be the output, kind of like inner tonal details. If it ain't there to begin with, you can't make it appear. You can't. I've actually had some people say that's not true. It's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> it's like, if it wasn't there to begin with, you're going to have Lightroom. Well, even Lightroom ain't that good. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Um, I just have one simple question, and uh, optical properties versus electrical properties. You know, I've mentioned this in lens highly, endlessly, and it's just one example, all right? Point liner 58 millimeter. Oh, okay, great lens, fine. Um, what, what, what do you think uh, optical properties have any difference uh, than electrical properties? Oh, oh refraction and, uh, you know, diffraction of uh, the light. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. It, just one second here. Now, <coughs> now you can... You can you can do lens design in CAD programs, and there's some really fancy ones that these lens companies use to design lenses, and they can come up with like a dozen or more different uh, designs to uh, create, say, a 50 millimeter one four. So, for example, there's like a there's there's 30 different ways you can skin that cat. Um, the master technicians, which have all basically retired or died off by now. You know, I want to ask you on something. Do you really think that there is a difference between optical properties and electrical properties? You know, like there's a circuit board inside this uh, this iPad and inside the camera that's filming my face. Do you think that optical properties are one thing and electrical properties are another thing? If so, then you're deluded. You are deluded. You know, you know why this uh, lens feels so heavy? Well, sure, it's got a metal casing on it. No, it's actually really heavy because it's leaded glass. There is actual lead in the glass. Well, why is there lead in it? I mean, I have never seen in any photography magazine or YouTube video, there is not one person on YouTube or in any photography magazine that has ever talked about this. Is it going to help your photography? No. Uh, it will if you choose uh, to discern yourself as far as picking out the correct lens to fulfill the needs that you want. Like I said, you never pick out a lens based upon... Well, that lens makes flat, fuzzy images. And I'm like, yeah, do you know what? Uh, I can take this lens, and then I can like upload it here, and I can make them look flat and fuzzy using Lightroom. I don't want to buy a lens that, that outputs flat and fuzzy. If I want flat and fuzzy, I'll do that here. Why do you think that these lens companies over the past, you know, well over 100 years, have been sticking freaky crap in their glass? Uh, lead, niobium oxide, lanthanum oxide, the thorium. I showed you the thorium lens. I had that super huge radioactive lens on the Geiger counter that I waved over it, and that lens just screams with radioactivity. You know, it, just one day is like some drunk lens design. It's like, oh, let's stick some radioactive crap on this lens. That'll be a really good idea. <laughs> Why the hell do you think that they did that? They do the same thing now, except they don't use radioactive materials. You can still buy those radioactive lenses on eBay, by the way. Calcium fluoride, titanium dioxide, zirconium dioxide, and niobium oxide is what... Uh, niobium oxide and lanthanum oxide are the two things that are used in ED glass, usually. Um, there is an exception in the European Union for the manufacture of items with lead in them if they are optical instruments. So while Europe has emitted lead... For the use and manufacture of consumer items, there is an exemption for optical devices like lenses like this. This lens got a lot of lead in it. You know, you're not going to be licking the lens. I mean, who cares if it's got lead in it? Why do you think that is in the glass? Light is electricity. I mean, what you ever heard of photosynthesis, bitch? Have you ever heard of this other neat little thing called a solar panel? If you think that an optical uh, instrument like this, a lens, and uh, uh, an electrical device like the circuit board on this light meter, or something, if you think those are two different things and you are deluded, you're deluded. <laughs> They're one and the same thing. Why do you think this stuff is added to the glass? I mean, I'm just asking you. 
You know, just like, wow, well, for gits and shiggles, we're going to stick some freaky stuff in this glass. It changes the optical nature by which the light uh, passes through. Like lenses that have a lot of elements, and they're like the new 105 F1.4. Just one example among many. The blues get washed out. It scrubs the blue. The reason they actually stuck radioactive thorium in those old lenses is because it would uh, help the light slide through just like greasing up a, a naked baby. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> I guess that's a wrong analogy. Kind of know the slip and slide waters, you know, where you'd actually set your boat on a, uh, on a wet slide and you slide down. Well, imagine if that were dry. You know, you might burn your ass up on the way down, right? Uh, these things are added to the glass to help the electrical permittivity and permeability, the resistance and the capacitance of light that passes through it to hit the sensor or the film to make the image. There is zero difference between an electrical property and an optical property. Optical means light. And light, by the way, is electrical. Photosynthesis, solar cells, yada, 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 yada. Yes, yes, folks, every lens and all that freaky weird crap that they stick inside the glass, that is to change the dielectric permeability and magnetic, uh, excuse me, dielectric permittivity and uh, magnetic permeability of those glass elements. Yes, a lens is an electrical circuit. And if anybody wants to argue that fact, then, you know, post a comment below and we'll have at it and you will lose you will lose. You'll lose. Because apparently you know more than the billion dollar lens companies that are sticking this freaky crap in the glass. You know, it's like, if, if, if optical properties and electrical properties were two different things, then it'd just be like different in indexes of refractive glass in this. It'd just be glass. It's like, what's the highest optical glass we could stick in here? And that would be it. It'd just be, well, you know, it'd be different indices of refraction with different AR coatings or different nanoparticle coatings, which don't really change that much. They don't really change that much of anything other than interior reflection, which is very important. Um, but that's a given. All the other, all current stuff is AR coated anyway. So that's not going to change anything. So why do these lenses, they have secret formulas in them. Different companies use different secret ingredients. Zeiss and Voigtlander use lead, and they use uh, titanium dioxide and something else that they're never ever going to tell you or me or anybody else. It's like the secret sauce at KFC. It is like the secret ingredients of Coca-Cola. They ain't going to tell you because that is their secret ingredient for making their secret glass. Optical and electrical are one and the same thing. And if anybody wants to argue with me that a lens is not an electrical circuit for changing the nature by which light passes through it, then please let's have an art, let's have a debate about it. I'll gladly debate you on it because you will lose miserably. You will lose immediately, as a matter of fact. So, let's have at it. I love a good debate, especially where I know I'm going to win. <laughs> Catch you later. Bye.